On today's episode of I Make Bad Decisions and You Can Too, I'm going to show you how to stay warm making them. Oh, yeah. Winterization have to be so expensive. Winterization have to be so expensive. You want to get into the heated gloves, the heated jacket, you know, heated seats, heated pants. You just want to ride, and by the time you've bought all the gear, you don't have the gas, the money for gas to to go down the road. Well, I commute, therefore I don't have a choice but to find ways to stay warm without spending a lot of money. One of the first quick things I did is I bought a used windshield. It's a little bit taller than my other windshield that I ride with during the summer, and it really helps to get the wind up over the top of me, uh, blocking that cold air that comes by. The other morning I left, and yes, I know it's California cold, but it was 32 degrees when I left to go to work. Uh, I ride about 70 miles an hour in dry weather, and uh, the wind chill factor makes it around 12. So it's, it's chilly yet still. I like to take and layer up a pair of sweatpants underneath my, my work pants, um, a long sleeve shirt, nothing thick, just a thin long sleeve shirt like I've got on here underneath my riding jacket. I have a layered riding jacket. I do have a Sedici. I think I gave around $150 for it two, three years ago. Um, that helps cut the wind and that's really the name of the game staying warm on a motorcycle while going down the road it's holding that keeping that heat in you know not to get too sciencey but you can't add cold but you can remove heat heat moves so blocking that wind is going to help the cooler air from stealing the heat from your body thusly keeping you warm um, there's a lot of options out there for different different bits of gear that you can get. I recommend gauntlet gloves. You're going to want a good set of gauntlet gloves. I do have battery powered heated gloves. I gave $124 for them. That was at a dealership. You can get them a little cheaper online. They don't get overly hot on your hands. Therefore, I'm not sweating going down the road. That's another killer too. If your hands start sweating in your gloves, uh, for any reason, the minute you pull them off, you know, you're going to get cold real fast on, on the next bit of your, your journey. Um, the gauntlets, you want to make sure they have a good Velcro strap. So when you pull them on down over your, your sleeve of your jacket, you want to be able to Velcro that shut, making an airtight seal. Again, keeping the wind off you, you got to block the wind. Uh, another trick I use is I bought a pair of frog togs. Now I do ride year round. That means rainy weather, windy weather, uh, cats, dogs, whatever's falling from the sky. I got to make sure that I keep myself dry and warm. Uh, I've got an hour commute to work. There's a lot of opportunity to get real cold real fast. Um, so I, I bought frog togs. Uh, they're a good billowy pant. They go over my clothes. And I actually bought the frog tog road toads, which are great because they're intended for motorcycles. They have reflective piping on them and they actually have a, uh, reinforcement on the inner uh, calf to help protect the, uh, the pant themselves from exhaust. At the bottom of the frog togs, of course, they got a zipper leg. Uh, you zip them down over your boot and they are elastic. So again, there's another one of those airtight seals, uh, your shoes. I know a lot of people have, they, they like to wear Vans when they're riding their Harley. I know you Dyna guys, I get it. I got a pair of Vans too. Um, but I ride with a pair of just slip on boots. There is no opportunity for air to get in. If your feet get cold people, you're going to be freezing. I don't care what you're wearing from your ankles up. If your feet are cold, your whole body is cold. That is just a proven fact. You don't want to get into that mess. You can get hypothermic really fast. So slip on boots. You got a pair of sweats on under your pants. You got frog togs over top of them. Windbreaker pants, even cheaper yet. 
they'll do the job. They're not always as water repellent. Again, I ride year round, rain or shine, I gotta keep the water off me. A good riding jacket is gonna be water repellent already. Uh, not waterproof, but water repellent. So you're still gonna wanna dry it out when you get home. Uh, my jacket has different layers inside that I can remove. It's got a thermal layer, it's got a windbreaker layer, and then it's got the main jacket itself, the, the shell, which is armored. Um, I would recommend a riding jacket if you're going to spend your money. Uh, that's where I put the money at. You want a good armor jacket because there is no, no way around the fact that you need to have good gear. I know it's cliche. You want to dress for the slide, not the ride. Going down is no fun. Uh, being a motorcycle mechanic myself, uh, we do collisions at my shop. And I've seen some people pretty tore up because they wanted to go out looking cool rather than going out and being safe. Um, so again, don't sacrifice on the safety of your gear. Go ahead and spend a little bit extra. Get armored gear if you can. Um, so moving on, another spot that you really wanna look at, making sure you keep the air out, and uh, this one's a really cheap fix. You go on Amazon, uh, get a balaclava. I, I bought one, it goes over your head, covers your face, your nose, leaves your eyes open, obviously. Uh, but it comes down low on your neck and goes on your collar. So when you zip that riding jacket up, you've now created another wind tight seal. All of that, when it works together, I can tell you 32 degrees in the morning is an average temperature when I leave temperature when I leave for work. And I do not get cold whatsoever. I am just right fine all the way to work. Take my gear off, go throughout my day. It's dark when I'm getting off right now because it's winter time. We're back down the low temperatures, even when it's raining, throw my gear back on. I come home day in, day out, and I can't say I've had a day where I've been cold. Now, I didn't get here just like I woke up one day and I knew it. Now, I understand a lot of it's common sense, but the reality of it is I've been broker than I am. So I've been the guy in jeans. I've been the guy in the short sleeve shirts and just the work coat I had laying around thinking I'd be great going down the road. Well, you get a little bit of speed under you. You're not doing so hot. It's cold. Um, so yeah, that's those are just some quick tips. Those are some things that you can do to stay warm while going down the road in the winter time. Now, if you're not in California, if you're in if you're uh, up in the north, you know Wisconsin, Michigan, back east on the east coast, you know in the higher elevations, you're going to spend a little bit more money trying to stay warm. Um, if you're in snowy conditions and you're writing, you're probably already got that figured out and this video isn't really for you. So this is for California cold mostly, uh, southern states when it's chilly outside. And you're like me, you're just doing the best you can to get down the road, stay safe, stay warm, and not end up hating your motorcycle ride. That's the thing, we ride because we love it. I ride because I love it. I do have a car I could commute in, Yes, gas is expensive, and I've chosen the motorcycle, but it was an easy choice for me. My wife, on the other hand, would much rather see me in the car. It's got a heater. It's got a stereo. It also gets terrible gas mileage, and it's not fun. Honestly, it's terrible. So, other things you can do. I mean, you get on a, get on Facebook Marketplace. Get a look on a eBay. Get a set of hand guards. I know a lot of guys uh, put these on because they look cool, but the reality of it is, is when you get it on here, settled in right on your hand control, now you've got a nice block for the wind. You know, you with those gloves and, and these hand guards, keeping the wind off your hands, it's going to help you out quite a bit staying warm. You know, in fact, let's put these on. It's a real simple deal. Um, on a Harley such as this, you need a half inch wrench. There's a little acorn nut down here on the bottom. We're just going to pop it loose. Kind of keep an idea of the orientation of your mirror. That way when you go back together, it's in the same spot. Uh, get that nut loose. And this one I don't think has been off of it since it was new. Go ahead and pull that loose. Long-winded. Don't lose your washer. You got a little lock washer there. Set those aside. I'm going to use the seat because that's smart. Pull the stem of the mirror up out of the hand control. Set this right in place and put that mirror stem right back down through it. Once that's on there, 
Go ahead and get that nut back on there. Find it. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come around here and get on the bike and try and set it all into place so I can see if that's where I'm happy with it. You don't want to reach up to go grabbing your brake and you grab a handful of handguard. So I'm thinking right about there will give me room. So we're going to test fit this right quick. Let's get it tightened up. Got my mirror where I want it. And we're going to test fit it because, you know, when you're in a parking lot maneuver, you're going to be turning these handlebars pretty good. And if you're running a fixed fairing like I am, a frame-mounted fairing, well, you might end up hitting that, that fairing with that handguard, scratching things all up and causing a mess. So let's see. How far? Ooh. I got about a quarter inch. That is money right there. Perfect. Mirror's right where I need it to be. I am happy with that. So let's give that an extra little cinch down. Make sure it's tight. We don't want it to come loose on us in the wind. Oh yeah. Perfect, done deal. One more check now that it's tight. Got that quarter inch, love it. Still working on the bobber project, waiting on parts. Hoping to see those pretty soon. So right here, that acorn nut, same thing. We're gonna pull it loose, maybe. Turn it the right way, there we go. So if you see here, it's a real simple design. It just goes right in line with the mirror stem. Got one half inch nut right down here on the bottom. Take that off, pull the mirror out, slide the hand guard on, stick the mirror back down in, put the nut on, tighten it up, you're set to go. This right here is gonna take the wind right off your hands, push it up, up over, and down below your hands, helping your hands stay nice and warm. The name of the game in the winter time is just trying to stay warm. You know, you wanna do that without sacrificing safety. Uh, Sweatpants aren't going to keep you safe if you're in a slide. So you want to make sure that you've got good gear on top of that. You know, I, I want everybody to be safe out there. Long sleeve shirt, you know, it's not going to protect you in a slide. Again, you want to make sure your jacket is armored. Armored pants, armored jacket, good over the heel leather boots, um, and a good DOT approved helmet. These are the things that are really going to keep you safe on the road. The stuff that I'm telling you is just help you stay warm. That way you can enjoy your motorcycle year round. So go out there, ride those bikes, whether you're commuting, whether you're just riding for fun. Stay warm, and I'll see you guys again next time. Thank you.